Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, sorry for being late um, and sorry for this technical issues. Uh, I am actually today's host. Great. Thanks, everyone. And good morning. Uh, good morning and good night. Um, and uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, coming here. Um, and I am today's host, Joy San. Uh, let me briefly introduce about the program, because many of you actually throw a lot of questions um, in our group chat. So let me briefly introduce what ABCDE Hacker Camp is. Um, so ABCDE Hacker Camp is, ZK Hacker Camp is actually a two month Hacker Camp from July 15th to September 15th. So this Hacker Camp is actually divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is the ZK curriculum, and the second is a hackathon, and the third is a demo day. So the hackathon is followed by the ZK curriculum, which will start at August 14th. So August 14th, we will start the hackathon, and the demo day will be on September 15th. So like we have a six week curriculum. The last week of cur curriculum will overlap with the start of the hackathon, and we will have another registration link for the hackathon. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, we will also announce all those notes into the um, our group chat as well as Twitter. So stay tuned. And today we're very honored to invite uh, our mentor today, um, Dr. Zhang Jiahen, Dr. Jiahen Zhang, graduated from University of California, Berkeley, and also under the guidance of renowned cryptography expert, Professor Don Sun. Um, he is currently serving as a assistant professor at the US, um, and he is also the chief scientist of Polyhedra. Welcome, Dr. Zhang. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause. All right. Um, yeah, I, I will, so for now, I would just like pass my mic to Dr. John um, and to directly enter our topic of today, um, the efficient zero knowledge proofs uh, theory and practice. Hi, thank Dr. John. So, Great. Hi. <laughs> okay, so, so you can see my screen, right? Yes, yes. Okay, let's get started. And thank you uh, very much for the nice introduction. Uh, I'm Jia Heng Zhang. Uh, I'm an incoming assistant professor in National University of Singapore. And I'm also the co-founder and chief scientist in Conhedra. And today I will talk about uh, zero knowledge proof from both theoretic and practical perspectives. And in theory, we will cover how to design the efficient protocol for general computation. And in practice, we will cover how to apply the protocols to blockchain and also machine learning. So the first thing is the verification. Verification is everywhere in our daily life. For example, we need to show the ID card for verification in many scenarios. And we use the fingerprint as a verification to unlock our computers. We also need the verification for email login. In addition, the privacy is rising concern in recent years. It is required because privacy leakage may cause economic loss and security issues. And most states in the US have enacted regulations and laws to protect customers' privacy. I just list a few of them. And in Europe, they have general data protection regulation, which is known as GDPR. However, sometimes privacy is contradictory with verification because you need information for verification, but this information may leak price. Here is the example. In the US, you cannot buy a beer under 21. So in general, you have to show your ID card to prove that you are over 21. However, the ID card like driver license contains other sensitive personal information, like your address and your name. So it is good to cover this sensitive information and only review the birthday, right? Because then you can verify you are over 21. But this is not ideal, as your birthday is leaked. The perfect approach is to show you are over 21 without any extra information. Then we achieve the verification and the privacy at the same time. Unfortunately, in cryptography, we have such a tool called zero knowledge proof to achieve both verification and privacy. And the notion of ZK zero knowledge proof was proposed 
uh, by Caruso, Michali, and Van Cole, uh, back to 1985. It is a protocol between two parties. As you can see here, one is the prover and the other is the verifier. The prover needs to prove the statement, um, here is CW, equals, to y, equals y to the verifier and write down its corresponding proof. Here we assume C is a public function, W is the input and Y is the output. But here the input W is a private witness to the prover. That means the verifier doesn't know the value of W. After checking the proof, the verifier decides to accept or reject the statement. And there are three properties of such a protocol. The first one is straightforward, completeness. If the statement is true, the verifier accepts the statement. The second property is consonance. If the statement is not true, the verifier rejects the statement. These two properties achieve the verification, right? And the last property is zero knowledge. That means the proof leaks no information about the secret witness doubling beyond the fact the computation is correct. This property achieves the privacy for the uh, protocol. And uh, we will ju just, uh, <coughs> sorry, we just refer to zero knowledge proof as to the AKP or the AK proof for simplicity in this talk. And zero knowledge proof has a lot of applications. The most popular application in the is in the domain of blockchain and cryptocurrency. And I, I think here, I don't need to introduce what is blockchain and what is cryptocurrency. And I think blockchain is very good and very popular. And we have many, many uh, new applications on blockchain, uh, including decentralized finance, NFT, and Web3. However, there are also some challenges limiting the development of blockchain. Two of them are privacy and scalability. So first for the privacy, all transactions are public on the blockchain but these transactions may contain sensitive information of users. So the privacy is a big issue. And another issue is scalability. For example, Bitcoin can only support seven transactions per second, while the centralized payment system Visa can support 24,000 transactions per second. So there is a big gap in terms of scalability. And the Bitcoin's TPS is pretty low, so it cannot be used to deal with a huge amount of transactions in our daily life. Unfortunately, it turns out that zero knowledge proof is a key solution to both issues. For privacy, there is a cryptocurrency called Zcash, and they build privacy preserving transactions on their blockchain. As you can see in this example, the transaction in Zcash uh, hides the sender's address, the receiver's address, and also the transferred amount. But it can still be verified. It, it can still be verified, uh, verified with the ZK proof on blockchain. And for scalability, we have ZK ROB. And the main idea behind ZK ROB is to generate a single ZK proof for a bunch of transactions. Then other users only need to check the single proof for validity of these transactions instead of validating transactions one by one. So the scalability will be hugely improved with this approach. And ZKP also has applications in the machine learning domain. As we all know, the area of machine learning has a big success in a lot of applications. And, it, and a good machine model is an intellectual property and valuable asset for some companies. And these companies won't leak their secret machine model to others. However, sometimes, they still need to reveal the model property to their clients. Then these clients can trust the model providers and pay for the service. For example, uh, in applications of stock prediction and healthcare in machine learning, the clients want to know the accuracy of the model. And the model owner can generate the key proof for the required accuracy without leaking the parameters of their secret models. So this is an example for how uh, the application of the key on machine models. And in addition, we can also build a fire marketplace with the key proof on blockchain for machine models. And the model provider can write down the key proof on blockchain 
and interested buyers can do fair exchange with the machine model providers. So this is the uh, another example or another applications of blockchain uh, of machine. Because of this exciting applications, zero knowledge proof becomes a very active research area, not only in academia but also in the industry. The zero knowledge proof was selected as one of the ten breakthrough technologies by MIT Technology Review uh, in uh, in two thousand and eighteen. And also um, the very big venture capital. Uh, as you can see, pays much attention to ZK proof. They post articles to introduce the underlying technique and recent development of ZKP, and they also invest multiple ZK startups. Additionally, there are also some ZKP workshops uh, and also uh, ZK uh, camp, like uh, like this, right? The ABCD ZK camp, and with like over uh, multi, multi, uh, I think multiple thousand attendees discussing the standard and uh, advancement of ZK proof. And last year, there, there is also a new public ZKP MOOC taught by leading researchers in this area. So ZKP is very hot. And since zero knowledge proof is so popular and useful in many applications, we want to design good ZKP protocols. But before that, what is a good ZKP protocol? So in this slide, we are focused on the efficient measures of ZKP. The first thing is the proof size. It's just a length of the proof, and we hope it is as short as possible. And we say the proof is succinct if it is much shorter than the witness length. The second way is verify time. It's the time for the verifier to check the proof, and we require it is much faster than evaluating the function by the verifier itself. And the last one is the prover time. The it is the time for the prover to generate the proof. And right now, we know the proof time is a bottleneck, especially for large-scale computation in various applications. And let me just show you an example here. Suppose the computation is pretty simple, uh, matrix multiplication, which is commonly used in machining neural networks and other applications. So statement is W squared equals Y, where W is the 256 times 256 matrix. We know the local computation is very fast. However, if we use the existing protocol to generate the proof, oh, here we use scroll 16, the protocol used in the, in the cache. The verification is only three milliseconds, and the proof size is only uh, is also very small. So that means the proof size is seen while the verification is very fast. However, the proof time is pretty slow. It's over 1,000 seconds. So the protocol is not practical for complicated applications such as machining and zk run. This is not good. So my past research is centered on addressing the bottleneck of zk proof from both theoretic and practical perspectives. And in theory, I designed the zk proof for general computation with optimal proof time. In practice, I designed a tailored protocol for various applications. And I have multiple works on both sides. Additionally, I also have some work, as you can see here, on the bridge between the theory and practice. I just use the color of uh, yellow, and which build quite different models of the K-proof, inspired by some real-world applications. And my research, um, I, and, and, but, but I don't have time to cover all of this. So in today's talk, I just pick one work on theory side, one work on practice side, and also another work on the bridge between theory and practice. So this is the outline of today's talk. Oh, any question here? Okay, cool. Let's move to the main body of this talk. The first work is Libra, building succinct ZK proof with optimal poor computation for layered circuits. And this protocol is named Libra. So we will refer it as to Libra in the following slides. Before diving into the details of the protocol, um, I need to introduce some building blocks. The first one is the GKR protocol. So for this protocol, the prover proves the statement CWXY, but the protocol only requires verification. That means there's no privacy. 
as we assume both parties know the input W. And GPL protocol is a general proof protocol for any computation. But how can you claim that this protocol works for any computation? They use a very common approach in cryptography to model the computation C as layered arithmetic circuit. This type of circuit is universal and they can capture any computation that can be done in our computers. Why? Because our computer just uses circuit to compute functions in the bottom lab, in the hardware lab, right? So it is general. And the protocol is good, the GKR protocol. It enjoys succinct precise bus verification time because of the underlying some check protocol. As the name of some check indicates, the statement's protocol is a summation for a polynomial from F0 to Fn minus one. Um, the, uh, the summation is H. So here F is a polynomial. And the naive computational cost is OL as you need to add N evaluations together. And to get faster verifier time, the proof proves the summation to the verifier. The verifier only needs to check the proof instead of the computing the summation by himself. So I won't tell you the magic math and details of this protocol, but it turns out that the proof only needs to generate a short proof along with a single evaluation on FR. Here, R is a random point in a very big field. And the verifier checks the short proof together with FR decides to accept or reject the state, some check statement. A short proof is only a log n, while the verification is also log n, oh, sorry, the short proof is log n, and the verification time is also log n plus one actual evaluation of FR. And given the some check protocol, I can introduce the GKR protocol working for layered arithmetic circuit. As you can see here, we have a layered circuit C with input W and output Y. Suppose the output layer is layer zero and the input layer is layer D. The depth of the circuit is D. Let, uh, let us focus on the input layer first. We can define function VD according to the input values from W zero to W n minus one. We assume, here we assume the input size is n. But how can we define the VD? I can use an example to explain it. Uh, if n equals eight, we have eight inputs from W zero to W seven, right? Then we just define VD zero equals W zero, VD one equals W one, and so on and so forth. So the last statement is VD seven equals W seven. It's pretty simple. This is the definition of VD. And similarly, we can define such function V for each layer from V0 to VD, according to the gate values in, in, in that layer. And the essential idea of the protocol is to reduce the claim about V0 to the claim about V1, then reduce the claim about V1 to the claim about V2, and do it recursively. So finally, state the claim will be reduced to a claim about VD. Then the verifier only needs to check the input layer instead of running the circuit by himself. And it is pretty simple and fast for the verifier. Okay. So the next question is how to reduce the claim about VI to the claim out of VI plus one. The building block of Samtrack protocol comes in here. We know the circuit is layer. So gate values in VI are determined by uh, gate values in VI plus one. And we can write the relationship between VI and VI plus one by some check equation in the middle. And given this equation, we can reduce the claim about VI to VI plus one automatically by the sum check protocol, right? And specifically, if the, spin, if the prover knows the value of VI R1 on the left side, 10, after the sum check, he will know VI plus one on a, a random point, RI plus one. So this is how the, uh, reduce can finish during the GKR uh, protocol. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, to want... uh, sure. sorry to interrupt you. I have a question. Uh, does GKR protocol need a trust setup? No, because here we are, I, I, I will cover it later, but I, here I can see, no, because we assume there's no privacy. 
the Wi-Fi knows the input himself, himself. So there's no trust to set up. Okay. And with this is a good question. This is why we want to build ZK proof on top of GKR. Because GKR protocol has some great properties. First, the operation is light for both prover and the verifier. Second, the all op because all operations are for polynomials, which only contain addition and multiplication, it's, it is very fast, especially faster than the general encryption algorithms with exponential agents. Secondly, the proof size is thin and the verifier time is fast. But it has some changes. We want to turn GKR protocol into zero knowledge proof. Firstly, its proof time is secure. The C represents the number of gates. It is good in complexity, but it is impractical, especially for large circuits. And you can imagine the big blow up if the circuit has over 1 million gates. Secondly, there's no privacy in GCAR because we assume the input is public known to the verifier. And main contribution of our work is to address these two challenges. First, we achieve the optimal prover time for GCAR protocol. And second, we end zero knowledge proof on top of GKR without any overhead. So we first focus on achieving optimal prover time. The original prover time in GKR is secure, as I mentioned previously. It is impractical. And the problem of achieving linear prover time for GKR protocol is an open question for over 10 years. And there are multiple works trying to solve this problem in the past decade. For example, in 2012, the CMT paper improves the proof time to quasi linear, C log C. And later on, there are some new improvements on several special types of circuits, including regular circuits and data parallel circuits. That means they have some assumptions on the structure of the circuit. And our work achieves the linear time for arbitrary layer circuits. We don't have any assumption on the structure of the circuit. Some sums all previous works and resolves open question ultimately. And in addition, our protocol has great performance in real implementations. The concrete efficiency is point, uh, point 0.45 uh, or 0.41 microseconds per gate. It brings 10 times speed up compared to the previous CMT protocol. And here is just some technical overview uh, on how can we achieve the linear proof time. This is also the most technical part in this talk. Uh, we just go over the sum check protocol. In fact, the sum check protocol should take two variables, B and B prime, as each gate in layer I takes two inputs from layer I plus one in a layer circuit, right? Because each gate has two inputs. And in the original paper, they just type wrong sum check. So the cost is secure. And in CMT, they observe that the pro polynomial f is very sparse. All the n log n values are not zero. So the complexity will be reduced to n log n. And in our approach, we use a quite different method. And we divide the equation into two phases. The first is for the variable b, and the second is for the variable b prime. And each phase takes linear time, so the total time is still linear. And specifically in the first phase, we just initialize the values behind the summation B when B varies from n to zero to n minus one in linear time. Then we can run some check protocol on B in linear. After the first phase, B will be replaced by a random point Ri plus one. And we initialize the values behind the summation B prime when B primes varies from zero to n minus one in linear time. Then we can run some check on B primes in linear time. It is pretty similar to the uh, phase one. Hence, the final prover time is still linear. Okay, I, I, I move fast in the uh, technical uh, part because I, I think you don't need to know the technical details, but I still want to show how I think about the problems in research, especially in uh, theory uh, for general computation. If you don't understand, that is totally fine. And next, we move to any zero knowledge property. So back to the GKR protocol, the leakage is everywhere. As a sum check, 
and via RI, we will get information about the circuit value for each iteration. And to avoid the leakage, the naive solution is to encrypt every message by homomorphic commitment during the protocol. Then the reference checks the proof without this de uh, decrypting messages. And then the reference does time consuming multiplication and quality test over an encrypted message, as you can see here, which brings over 100 times overhead on the verifier side. So the verifier is very unhappy about this solution. Another solution is to end mass polynomial on the sum check polynomial F. The general idea is to use a random polynomial delta to hide information from F. They do linear random combination on F and delta and general sum check proof for the combined polynomial. And with this approach, all information about F will be hidden by delta. However, the size of the mass polynomial delta is the same as F. So it brings over high overhead on the prover side when handling delta. The prover is unhappy about this solution. To address both problems in existing method, we have our solution. We still use the idea of the mass polynomial. However, our mass polynomial size is especially small in the size of F. The intuition is that the total proof size is a log n in a sum check. Hence, there is at most log n leakage in the proof. Ideally, we can use log n size polynomial to hide all information leaks in the proof. And with careful design, we achieve the log n mass polynomial. That means the size of delta is pretty, pretty smaller than f. So it brings no overhead to end the privacy, since the mass polynomial delta is too small to bring overhead. And if we put it together with polynomial commitment, we achieve zero knowledge on top of the GKR protocol. And to summarize, Libra is the first ZKT with linear true time, 16 proof size, and fast verifier for general computation. But here, I I'm just, you know, if you re, uh, still remember the question uh, uh, previously, Libra needs a universal trusted setup. After Libra, I have some follow-up works to remove some trust assumptions in Libra and uh, generalize the optimal proof of computation to arbitrary circuits without uh, the layered constraint. You can check my paper for more details. So in, in my follow-up work, I removed the trust that I have. And it is still it still it still has the optimal cruel type. Okay, next we move to the second working thought, uh, which is the key bridge. Uh, it is also the core product of behind polyhedra. It builds an infrastructure for interoperability of blockchains. And before diving into the detail, the first question is what is bridge in blockchain? Um, bridge is just a communication tool between different blockchains. So given two blockchains of the sender chain and receiver chain, you have, you have some assets like Bitcoin in the sender chain and you want to transfer the Bitcoin to the receiver chain. With the bridge, you can create a transaction to burn when Bitcoin on standard chain and on the other side, the receiver chain will create one Bitcoin for the corresponding account. Then you finish the token transfer between the standard chain to the receiver chain. And in addition to token transfer, the bridge should support other functions such as message passing and state changing across different blockchains. And crossing bridge uh, bridges are very important and, and they, are, they are treated as highway for the multi-chain universe of blockchains. Because nowadays there are many different blockchains coexist, each way having advantages and a unique ecosystem. To enable various operations and functionality across different blockchain, uh, blockchains, we need bridges. Although bridges are important, existing bridges are vulnerable to attack. Attacks on existing bridges have cost over two billion US dollars in the past two years. Therefore, blockchains need more secure bridge. And our work of ZK Bridge achieves this score with the technique of ZK Proof. 
and most existing bridges rely on committee validators. And in their protocol, when the user wants to pass the transaction from sender chain to the receiver chain, they post the transaction on the sender chain, then send the transaction to the committee. Committee members check the transaction has been finalized on the sender chain and sign on this transaction. And if there are enough signatures on the transaction, the receiver chain believes the transaction is correct and creates a corresponding transaction. And many previous bridge protocols use this mechanism, including Poly Network, Wormhole, and Loni. However, the problem is that the security heavily relies on a centralized committee. If some members are compromised, they may sign on incorrect transactions, and the bridge security is broken. To address the security issue in existing bridge, our solution doesn't rely on committee, but rely on the mathematic proof. As we all know, in blockchains, each block has a block header, and the block header contains the hash of all transactions. So the intuition is that if the receiver chain can learn the block header of the sender chain, the any transaction in the sender chain can be verified with the block header. With this idea in the mind, every node can generate the proof for the latest block header of the sender chain and send, it, send the proof to the receiver chain. So this is a process. Then the receiver chain checks the proof and maintains the longest block header of the sender chain. Later on, any transaction appearing in the sender chain can be passed to the receiver chain. Since the receiver chain can use the hash to validate the transaction. So with this approach, the bridge is translated. We don't need to rely on any node. Even though some nodes are corrupted, they cannot fake as proof accepted by the receiver chain by the soundness requirement of ZK proof. However, the concept is, is straightforward, but there exist technical changes for proof-based bridge. For example, the statement of block header validation sometimes is complicated. For some, uh, especially for some proof of stake based blockchain. If we want to generate a ZK proof for a block header validation, we need to validate over 100 signatures and generate corresponding proof. And one circuit to validate the signature has around two minutes. So the total circuit five is over 0.2 billion gigs if we have 100 signatures. Even if we use a Libra to generate the proof, on such a large circuit, it still takes around uh, 1,500 seconds. It is obviously, it is impractical for bridge deployment. Fortunately, although the circuit size is very big, the circuit has a special structure known as data parallel. The big circuit consists of 100 sub-circuits with exactly the same structure as a signature validation algorithm is common. So a natural proposal is to use distributed algorithm to accelerate proof generation. As there is no crossing wires across different sub copies in the circuit, in the ideal case, each machine can run the circuit separately. However, we still need to aggregate the proof size Otherwise, the proof size is too big, too big to check. The gas cost is also very high. So we have to design a distributed algorithm for ZK proof. The proofs work on distributed ZKP is called DIZK. And the algorithm is based on Gross 16, the protocol used in Zcash. If you still remember the example of matrix multiplication, you know the proof time of the Gross 16 is pretty slow. So in DIZK, the scale of the protocol to 100 larger circuits by distributed algorithms. However, it can not be used to address the problems in the bridge because of two limitations. Firstly, the proof time of DIZK is still prohibitively slow for large scale circuits with over 100 million gates. Secondly, the communication among different machines has very high overhead and the system is not robust. Hence, we design a new distributed ZK proof based on our optimal proof protocol, Libra. 
and the proof can generate a single proof for 100 copies of the circuit with enough distributing machines. And our algorithm enjoys perfectly linear scalability, which means the proof time is t times faster than the original algorithm given t machines. It is optimal. The communication among different machines is also minimum for GKR part. And later on, we also get the minimal communication for the polynomial commitment part. If we combine them together, we get the minimal communication for distributed liberal. And with this new algorithm, the total proof time will be reduced to less than 10 minute seconds, which is practical in real world deployment. So with this approach and carefully careful system design, we build the first trustless and efficient bridge. And our ZK bridge also has some impact in the industry, uh, even though it was only published less than one year, less, uh, less than one year. We established the collective with the aim of building a secure universal foundation for multi-chain interoperability. Thousands of entities, companies, and researchers have joined in the collective to bring the technology to wide industry adoption. In addition, many startups have integrated ZK Bridge into their product. And for example, we have a startup called Polyhedra. Uh, it has raised over uh, 25 million US dollars with the ZK Bridge as core technique. And we also have launched the, uh, the BNET. It has searched Polyhedra on website. Any question here? Okay. If there is no question, we move to the uh, last part of this talk. ZK Machine Learning. Uh, ex um, hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. hi, Professor Zhang. So, uh, actually, I got a question uh, about your like ZK Bridge uh, paper. So, I read through mm -hmm. your paper, and I understand there is like a decentralized, uh, I mean, distributed. Uh, algorithm for the uh you know the verification part right there's a the um you, you designed a the variable protocol for the decentralized uh, de <laughs> distributed the full circuits into like different machines so the computation mm -hmm. could be linearly uh proportion uh scalable right and uh yeah. i actually i got a question for this part i i mean how do you prevent uh, maybe some adver uh, adversarial uh, nodes join. It, it's a permissionless, right? So how do you prevent um, yeah. adversarial yeah. nodes join join into the relay network and uh, doing some malicious things? Like maybe I, I mean, uh, uh, he can do something like not not necessarily uh, generate a fake proof, but maybe she can just uh, prevent the uh, whole verification from being accepted. I mean, he can provide like false information in the aggregating uh, aggregating phase and make the whole proof invalidated, and pro so that they can preventing the proof from being accepted. Is that possible? I mean, yeah. Okay, this is a very very great question. So mm -hmm. um, I can answer this question by two parts. So the first thing is that okay. actually we can it is a distributed uh, algorithm, right? But we can still make it like parallel or, or just distributed with a central server. It's just like you buy uh -huh. AWS server and you do it parallelly or you buy many, many machines. So in this case, uh -huh. there's no malicious machine. Oh, and so you other... you can purposely try to choose a like uh, audience nodes, you mean that? Maybe? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can okay, control all machines. And okay, in the same case, you're right. If you just make all the proof not only the relay network, but also the proof generation, uh, decentralized uh -huh. and the permissionless. Then everyone can join join in and to make a contribution to the distributed machines. And in this case, we still have the algorithm for the master node, but for the master node. That means if you uh -huh. go back here, there is a master uh -huh. node. So the master node can check the partial proof submitted by each machine, as you can see here. So if you are malicious, okay. Yeah, you will be cached by the master node. So you will, okay. yeah, you will, yeah, you know, you will 
your, your proof will not be accepted. So it is robust. And it also shows uh, another okay. advantage of our system. Our system is uh -huh. very robust. Uh, I, I understand, but uh, is that possible that they can just generate a fake proof or, I, I mean, not, not necessarily fake proof to be accepted, but just uh, maybe the, the adversarial just want to prevent this transaction from happening. So did they just provide some uh, like fake input into mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the whole protocol so that the, the whole generation generate an invalid proof. And in that case, it won't be accepted. So the transaction is blocked, right? Uh, yeah, but, but you cannot do this. As I, I said, you need, to do, you, you need to submit your proof to the master node. So if you okay. make something so, wrong, uh, wrong, then the master oh, node I will see. find your proof is wrong. Okay, so just, he, just, he can just reject the, the yes. individual proof. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I, I, actually, I got another question. So, so in your like uh, the relay next header protocol, so you purposely, uh, your design choice is purposely contact different full nodes. Uh, so I, I understand, is there any specific reason that you contact the full nodes rather than uh, like client nodes? Yes, because yeah. sometimes uh -huh. live client is not it's not very secure. Right, company. It's not full node. It's not secure. Sometimes mean. because it is a light node. You know, for that uh -huh. you only check a partial things. For uh -huh. for Zoom, you only check the signatures from C committee. But some C okay. committee is not very, very secure. But for no full nodes. You have to check all the signatures for the committee. It's over like uh, uh, three okay. thirty thousand signatures, and it, it is must it, it must be secure, right? Because the okay. underlying blockchain must be secure. That means if you are full node, you download all transactions. You participate in uh, the consensus in the underlying uh, of the underlying blockchain. You you have to you, you are guaranteed the security of the blockchain. Okay, so it's more secure. So sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to uh, use a full node to guarantee to, to, to guarantee the full security of the bridge. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we we don't have um, much time, but I, I just have a very brief in, introduction to the area of zk machining. And, and we all know machine has a great success in many areas, including uh, image processing, speech recognition, self-driving cars, and drug discovery. But despite this great success of machine, there still exist multiple security problems. And I'm going to show a few of them with examples. The first one is called pro reproducibility. There are many machine models that are claimed to have very high accuracy on some data set, but others can never reproduce your results. And it is very frequent for researchers to ask how to reproduce the result of some models, as you can see here. And the second problem is called validity. Even, some com even if some companies really have a high quality machine model, but how can they make sure that they actually use the model when providing the service to customers? So there's an extreme case in 2018, a delivery Robert in Berkeley campus. They are claimed to be they are claimed to be developed by an AI company, and the company uh, says uh, cite that they use cutting edge machine models to make decisions and deliver food automatically. But it turns out this is not the case. People find these robots are actually operated by remote workers in Colombia. So in this case, machine is actually human learning. It raises the validity issues in machine. And zero knowledge proof is a significant tool to address these issues, as the concept of ZK proof is to generate the certificate for properties without leaking the, uh, the model information. So, for example, uh, with a secret machine model, the proof can prove the result is actually produced by this model with ZK proof. And similarly, the prover can also prove that the model has a very high accuracy rate on some data set. 
Still, the concept of using ZK proof to address security issues in machine is straightforward. How, but how to design the tailored proof system for real application is complicated. Here, I just use the example of classic and popular machine model, essentially to show the challenges. In decentry, each node has a conditional statement. So when we run the decentry prediction, in each node, if the statement is satisfied, we move to the left. Otherwise, we move to the right. And we can write a simple to-do code for decentry prediction on the right side. As I have introduced, most of the key proofs are run on a circuit. So we need to convert the to-do code to circuits. Obviously, this is not easy. The decentry prediction algorithm has many conditional branching statements, and it brings high overhead when we implement these conditional branching statements by the circuit. So we are unhappy about this naive solution. To avoid the blow up of the transition for conditional branching statements, we design a par particular circuit for decentral predictions. The intention behind the construction is that the circuit only needs to validate the prediction instead of running the circuit program. So we can provide some auxiliary input in the circuit to help validate the algorithm. Specifically, in addition to the original input data A, as you can see here, the pool provides up A bar, which is a permutation of A. But A bar, uh, but, but in A bar, the attributes are ordered according to the prediction pass when running the decentry algorithm on the, on the data sample A. Then with A bar and the prediction pass, we only need to validate the jump is correct in each step by comparing AIG with BG, which removes the conditional branching. And the circuit also validates the permutation between A and A bar to prevent the prover changing the input data. With this approach, the circuit does, need, does not need to simulate conditional branching. And also with careful design, the circuit size is only D plus H. There is a number of attributes in the input data, H is the height of the tree. So it is optimal in complexity as the plain algorithm of prediction without proof is also at least D plus H. And it is much smaller than naively implementing the pre, uh, prediction algorithm by circuits, which may cause two to the power of H overhead on the circuit size. And we also designed the optimal circuits for accuracy test of the decentry model on data set. And we also extend the optimal circuit to work for other machine models like random forest. If you are interested, you can check out the paper for more details. And lastly, I want to mention a specific application of the machine. It marries the area of machining to the area of blockchain. We can build a fair model is trading platform on blockchain with ZK proof. The in, in this scenario, the model provider who wants to provide a machining model as a service can write a succinct proof for their model quality and post the short proof on blockchain. The proof does not leak any information about the available model. However, Arbitrary nodes in the network, in the blockchain network, can check the quality proof and decide to buy the service. They won't be deceived because of the soundness. So then they can do a fair exchange on blockchain. To conclude, ZK Design Tree is the first work to apply the technique of ZKP to machine inference to address the security issues. It also starts the area of ZK machining. And there are some follow-up works to extend this same concept to more complicated machine, uh, machine models, including CNN, DNN, and uh, the ImageNet. So hence, ZKML is becoming a new active research area. I think, uh, OK. So I think this is just uh, the end of the talk. But uh, be 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 before, before the ending, I, I can talk about some future work briefly. So let's go back to the figure of the theory and practice of ZK proof. Although we have efficient protocols with optimal prover time for general computation, and we also have practical protocols for real-world deployments. 
there still exists a gap between the decay proof and the local computation. The natural question is, how can I fill in this gap? Uh, I think compilers and hardware support will be essential factors for future development of the KP. So if you review the history of uh, the deep learning, um, you know, deep learning was once considered too expensive and impossible. But starting from 2012, the speed of deep learning has a huge leap and it creates more and more exciting applications like uh, right now, the chat GPT, right? It's a, it is wonderful. And it is partially attributed to the development of hardware from CPU to GPU and to, uh, and nowadays people are developing AI chips. The lesson we have learned from deep learning is that hardware acceleration plays a significant role when making the technology practical. So I believe the development of ZKP would have a similar curve with deep learning and we should pay more attention to the hardware. To be specific, we need hardware software called design for ZK proof. We continue design, designing ZK friendly hardware and ZK works on quite different models. We also consider a software optimization, which is hardware friendly ZKP protocol. And we also need system level optimizations for adaptive resource allocation. And in addition to hardware acceleration, we also need good compilers. Because most of the KP algorithms are running on circuits, which is quite different from high level programming languages like C, Java, Python, and even Solidity. To enable users to generate ZK proof easily, we cannot expect users to write the language of circuits. So we need the compiler to compile the high level programming language to circuits and run the ZK proof on circuits. I believe there is also much room for the research and applications in the compilers. Hopefully, the efficiency of the proof will be hugely improved uh, with development of hardware and compilers. Then we can design we can design better ZK proof for all kinds of applications, including ZK rollup, ZK database, and ZK appli other applications. We also consider compatible algorithms with the hardware and compiler. I'm, and the ultimate goal of the research is to have the optimal prover for any computing model, as well as tailored protocol for any real world applications. This is the future of the area of ZK. And I will put my efforts toward this goal. So finally, I, I just want to acknowledge my wonderful collaborators and co-authors during my PhD and also in the company. And I have about 20 collaborators from all over 10 institutes, from top universities and top companies. Thanks to them. Without their help, I can not finish all of this work. Okay, I, I should stop here. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for attending and listening. I'm happy to take questions. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, thanks, uh, Dr. Zhang. Uh, but we actually enter a um, maybe half an hour question sections. So actually, I already received a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, ZKP. Um, so is it okay like if we ask through the questions to you and then you answer the questions one by one? Hi, yes. Dr. John. Okay, great, perfect. Okay. All right, so the first so the first question is, um, what are the differences in performance between Libra with no trusted setup um, and the popular stock protocol? Um, okay. Can you just put, yeah, um, I can repeat the question. Now. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the chat, maybe others can also see the question. Oh yeah, of course, we're listening to the chat. Um, but I can also like repeat the question. So the first question goes to, um, what are the differences in performance between Libra with no trusted setup and the popular Stark protocol? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't have time to sh uh, show the concrete comparison with Stark, especially with Stark. Libra has a trusted setup, uh, as I mentioned, but later on in Virgo, uh, in, if you can see this work, no trusted setup work, uh, as, uh, 
this work, no trust is set up. Uh, it doesn't have trust set up. And then uh, the improvement uh, of this work, we call it Virgo. Um, comp the comparison uh, of between Virgo and the stock is that the pool time of Virgo uh, is 10 times faster than stock. The reason is that um, stock uses the time consuming FRI, if you know the underlying technique. And in Virgo, we also use FRI, but we only need to do FRI for a very small part of, of our circuit or of our computation. So for other part, it is much faster than Stark. But Stark needs to do the FRI for all computation, computational paths. So this is the reason why our protocol is, is much faster than Stark. Great. Um... How about like the second question goes to, okay, I'm gonna type it in a, in a group chat as well. Um, so the second question goes to like, how does the parallel zero knowledge proof achieve constant complexity communication between nodes? I send all the questions into the group chat as well. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I should uh, clarify. Uh, in distributed liberal distributed Virgo, the complexity is optimal, but it is not constant because the proof size of Libra it, by it, it so, uh, itself is log n. So we have log n communication because it has log n rows. However, we have achieved the constant complexity communication with nodes for distributed plot. So as you can see here, we have the decay rob. Uh, a new work with a mission. Uh, actually, the paper has, has been accepted uh, by SNP, but we, I think we haven't put it on archive. Um, I, I will just put, a, a, put it on archive, ar archive as soon as possible. You can check the paper for constant communication complexity in uh, distributed Planck. Thanks. Got it. Um, so the third third question uh, is regarding um, like how to design a zk proof system for a machine learning models with larger parameter sizes and different structures than the decision trees. Yeah, um, this is also a very good question. I covered it in my talk. Um, there is uh, some follow up work to extend um, the concept to more complicated machine models, but they use quite a different method. Uh, you know, for CNN, you need uh, to computation on your data, but for decision tree, you only need to do comparison. Um, the techniques is quite different, but you can check the paper. Like you can search ZK CNN, there's a paper to show how can you extend ZK proof to more complicated machine models. Thanks. Okay, got it. Okay, then the first question um, goes to like, similar to a data set in machine learning, uh, do different ZK proof systems have a unified benchmark to compare the performance? Um, for example, like time and space complexity. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Previously, but I can only see this in academia. Uh, in academia, uh, there is like common. Uh, common sense benchmark, which is uh, the Merkle tree, right? Because Merkle tree is commonly also commonly used in practice, and it is just a standard uh, function like Sharp two hundred fifty six. Then you can you can uh, have a benchmark for proving a Merkle tree with uh, two hundred fifty six leaves uh, on the Hash function from Sharp two hundred fifty six. Then you can compare the um, proof time, verification time, proof size with others. And the main advantage of our protocols is that our proof time is very, very fast. And the verification time is also very fast, but uh, you know, the proof size uh, is a little bit higher than like Snark or, 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 and Bulletproof. It is just a trade-off. Okay, got it. Um, and the, the last question actually is a very general question. Like how do we view the application of CKML 
um, in the blockchain and AI industries. Yeah, I, I think it's a very promising direction. Uh, there are many directions that we can explore, as I mentioned. Uh, first, like the human machining can uh, help us to uh, guarantee security and integrity of uh, machine models, which is pretty good. And I also mentioned the uh, fear marketplace. We can do trading uh, for um, for AI model uh, if if we want to provide machine model as a service. And I and the third, thirdly, I think we can also somehow combine the AI, AI training with ZK. Oh, sorry, AI training ZK and as well as mining process. Because if we want to do some proof of useful work, I think AI training is, is very useful. So maybe in this direction, we can also do some combination. So it's just 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 some roughly uh, some like very uh, very some basic ideas. Yeah. But this direction is very good. Totally, totally. Great. Um, and then maybe we can take uh, maybe roughly around like five to 10 questions uh, from the students. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to type into the chat um, or like you can raise your hand um, and unmute. Uh, I'm going to unmute yourself um, and then uh, maybe you can ask the questions directly. Does anyone have any questions regarding the materials that we cover today? Uh, no questions. Okay, great. Um, so Last call, like if you don't have any questions for Dr. John, uh, we will soon be end this question uh, end this session. Um, okay. All right, we receive a new message. So Yolanda um, asked in ZK Bridge, um, how exactly do updater contracts work with the relay network? Um, do the updater contracts passive passively listen to the rel uh, relay network or actively carry from uh, the relay network? Yeah, I think any node, or every node in the relay network can submit a proof to the smart contract and then smart, the, uh, the update contract. Then the update contract can verify the proof and update the state of the sender chain. Does that answer your question, Yolanda? Okay, great. So the second question goes to um, how long do you think it will take to become a circuit um, engineer with basic knowledge of cryptography? Uh, I'm not sure, but if for, for well-educated engineering or with, with a solid background in computer science, it may take like, like three to six months. Okay, uh, three to six months um, from a basic like knowledge of cryptography, and then you can become a very, um, I would say, a, a circuit a circuit engineer uh, with, you know, relatively um, enough of knowledge. Great, perfect. Um, does anyone else have questions? Okay, we received the third question. <laughs> uh, what are the areas of math that should be focused? Um, on uh, to get well version of CKP? Uh, cryptography is very important. And uh, you also need some basic mathematics uh, courses, um, including like uh, calculus, uh, linear algebra, and number theory. Uh, and uh, I think also a few, uh, group of and field series and probability theory, that is enough. Okay, great. Um, team asked, 
TMAX curious about ZKML works for model reproducibility. Um, how do we use ZK to make sure that the parameters are run on the model the same way without bias? Oh, yeah, you, you do the commitment. So you can imagine you just do a hash of all parameters, and then you cannot, you cannot change the parameters. Great. And then Victor asked, um, regarding the master node in ZK Bridge, um, what if it's got hacked um, and how many master nodes there are there? Yeah, this is a good question. So, uh, how do we see? You can assume there's oh, one master node and the master node must be honest. Or you can, you know, you, you can um, you have multiple master nodes because it is a decentralized network. And if the master node is not honest, then you, you will just create a fake proof. And the proof will not be accepted by update, co update contract. So the adversary cannot get any reward for the fake proof. Okay, another question is, um, which library slash framework uh, should we look into to get started with CKP for beginners? I recommend the, uh, I, I, I recommended the course of CKP, the, the CKP MOOC, you can just Check check the course on uh, YouTube. I think it is public. It, it is a good uh, good begin. Uh, I think it, it is good for the beginners to learn something about the game. And during their talk, they also mentioned some library framework of the game. So in general, it's good to just uh, you know start from um, a good uh, a good class. So I think ZKP MOOC is very good to start. ZKP MOOC, great. Any other questions? Oh, ZKP MOOC, yes, which is on that class. Yeah, um, for for the information, um, we can actually, you know, for, for the class material, as well as like all this information and questions, uh, we're gonna send you all the links regarding the materials, um, as well as like some of the materials covered by um, Dr. John. Uh, we're gonna send it to the group chat. So um, stay tuned in the group chat um, and feel free to ask any questions in the group chat. Um, and if, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. And also like, thanks for everyone uh, who get up early and also like come to study in a very early morning or night. Um, thanks everyone for coming to this class. So um, if you, you guys don't have any questions, uh, we're gonna end our session and um, more information will be um, sent in the group chat. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye everyone. See you next Saturday. Bye-bye.